My name is Adam Caulfield from Rochester Institute of Technology. And today I'll, I will be discussing our recent work called ACFA. And this work was completed in collaboration with Princess Songkhla University in Phuket, uh, Thailand. Embedded systems are increasingly used in modern systems today. And we've seen them in uh, making up smart spaces and the Internet of Things. They're typically implemented using low-end microcontroller units that are designed to be energy efficient and low cost. Because of this design, they are resource constrained, specifically in re with respect to security. Um, for example, these um, MCUs may typically uh, execute instructions in a bare metal, bare metal fashion and lack the typical security features that you would see on application computers, um, such as inter-process isolation, um, strong privilege levels, or even MMUs in some cases. Despite this, they are um, widely used to execute a variety of tasks, including safety critical tasks um, in modern systems. Um, for example, we've seen them utilized to um, implement a sensor and alarm based system in an industrial complex or um, supply chain setting, or even used to implement a modern remotely operated medical device such as a um, syringe pump. And so because of this, it is crucial for a device owner or a trusted party who operates the device to have the capability to monitor um, how exactly the MCU is operating in this remote location, specifically when they're executing these safety critical sensing tasks. So how exactly can we, can we achieve this notion of runtime auditing to determine how exactly this remotely deployed MCU is behaving, given that their software could be fully compromised? And so we, we wonder, with this notion of runtime auditing, how can we guarantee the following three properties? First, is it possible to generate an authentic and accurate um, piece of evidence of the exact runtime behavior that occurred as the MCU was executing its software? Second, given that we have generated this evidence, can we guarantee that the evidence is delivered to the device owner or some trusted party for further analysis to determine what exactly the behavior entails? And finally, given that this trusted party has analyzed the evidence and has detected that some compromise or malicious activity is going on, can we provide the capability to remotely remediate the source of the compromise? And so to, to look into this idea, how exactly we can provide these properties, one existing protocol that gets us pretty close to this is control flow attestation. Control flow attestation is a two-party protocol between a verifier, which in this case would be the device operator who operates on a application computer, and a prover, which is the remotely deployed MCU. In this protocol, the verifier will send a timely challenge to the prover, requesting that they execute their software to produce some evidence of the control flow path that was executed, and to attest this, uh, this control flow log along with the memory of the software itself. And so with this evidence, um, the prover will produce a log of every single control flow transfer that occurred during the execution and attest this with a digital signature or a message authenticated code to provide um, an authentic and accurate piece of evidence of the exact runtime behavior that occurred at the time of the challenge. And so with control flow attestation alone, we can guarantee our first desired property of runtime auditing. However, when getting from attestation to auditing, we, are still have some, we still have some challenges when it comes to the second and third desired properties. Mainly because attestation as a whole is a passive technique, meaning in my previous description of the attestation-based protocol, it assumes that the MCU is willing to participate in the protocol and is willing to respond to the challenge with some evidence and some attempt at um, an authentic uh, evidence. And so with current attestation-based techniques, there's no guarantee that the verifier will ever receive any, um, any evidence, any control flow log, if the device has, software has been fully compromised. They might ignore any requests and continue their malicious activity. Although this is satisfactory for attestation, because with, with this event occurring, the device operator can determine that this device is indeed not trustworthy. However, for the notion of runtime auditing, this is not, um, allow us to learn what is wrong, because the absence of evidence does not allow any further analysis to pinpoint the exact source of any vulnerabilities that might have existed in the source code. Furthermore, with the attestation-based technique, given that uh, this MCU might be fully compromised and ignoring requests from the verifier, 
what exactly can they do after detection has occurred, a detection of a compromise has occurred. Uh, given that they're ignoring messages, they will ignore any requests to shut down and stop out or operating maliciously. And so the last ditch effort to resolve this is physical intervention. Uh, but this obviously is not ideal as it might take time, allowing the compromised device to continue executing, uh, might be costly in the supply chain setting or might not even be possible given um, the exact deployment of the device. And so to summarize, with control flow attestation based techniques, we are able to achieve the first desired property of auditing. However, we are still missing the, the second and third desired properties. And so to bridge this gap, we propose in our work, ACFA active control flow attestation. Similarly to prior work, we guarantee that some runtime evidence is generated in an accurate and authentic manner, while also guaranteeing that the verifier will eventually receive this evidence, while also providing the ability for the verifier to execute some healing action after detecting a compromise. So the key idea of our design, unlike um, previous control flow attestation techniques, is that we extend the, the TCB to include not only the message authenticated code functionality or the digital signing of the evidence, but also the communication of the evidence in this as well. However, you might be wondering, just moving this into the trusted portion of the, of the code does not guarantee that the compromised device will ever execute the communication. And so to solve this problem, we introduced some lightweight hardware coupled with the MCU in order to guarantee that the control flow log will be generated and the transmission of this log will be actively triggered upon certain events during the execution of the software. And finally, we make use of this hardware that we introduced to also ensure that a healing action can be executed as soon as the verifier notifies the TCB that some compromise has been detected. In order to realize this idea, we implement a low-cost hybrid architecture for MCUs which leverages hardware and software components for these desired properties. The hardware extension is mainly responsible for protecting critical memory region, um, triggering the TCB to transmit and generate, this, generate and transmit this response, and also to record the, the MCU's control flow to have the accurate um, evidence of the exact path that was executed. On the software side, we implement the attestation capability and also the communication of the evidence while also implementing a verifier configurable um, healing action. So now let's dive into AC phase high level workflow on how exactly this works. Um, so first on the software side, the address space of the program memory on the MCU is divided into two regions. First, the TCB trusted software in our design and also the untrusted and potentially compromised application software. After booting, the TCB will execute first and then transfer over to the untrusted application to complete its sensing task. While this sensing task is being executed, our, um, our lightweight hardware extension is coupled with the CPU to monitor its execution and establish an active root of trust to regenerate the TCB upon significant events. So a little more details about what exactly the hardware is achieving during the execution of the application. First, it is detecting all of the branching instructions that are occurring and logging, all of, logging the destination addresses of these branching instructions to a dedicated region of memory, the control flow log. Also, while it is executing, the hardware is responsible for protecting any critical memory regions, such as the TCP software, the region dedicated for the log, and also um, the response as well, in order to ensure that the untrusted and potentially compromised application portion of the code does not interfere with any of these regions. And finally, in order to ensure that the TCB is activated upon certain events to provide the capability of the guaranteed delivery of the evidence, our hardware will generate a custom non-maskable interrupt that is internal to the hardware and cannot be configured by the untrusted application. So now let's dive into the TCB software a little more, look at its three internal sub-modules and their roles. So after the ACFA, our ACFA hardware triggers the TCB, the first submodule to execute is the attestation function. This will implement either a digital signature or a message authenticated code to sign the current state of the software and also the control flow log to produce the attestation response H. After this, this has been completed, we transition into the second submodule of the TCB called TCB wait. In this module, 
Um, the prover will be communicating with the verifier, the control flow log, and the authentication token, and wait for a response. While in this phase, the TCB will periodically retransmit the evidence if it has not heard any response back from the verifier. And with this, we ensure the verifier that once a significant event has occurred and once the hardware has triggered the TCB, it is remaining in a secure state until some response is received. After receiving a response, the next submodule depends on the response from the verifier. If they have approved of the evidence, then they, they inform the TCB to resume the, the sensing application in the untrusted portion of the code. However, if some compromise was detected, then we transition into the third and final submodule of the TCB, which contains a verifier configured um, healing action. This can include a variety of different actions depending on the verifier's desired security policy, such as erasing some critical data, um, shutting down the device, or patching a certain range of the program memory. This is always followed up by a re-execution of the TCB sequence in order to attest any changes made by the healing to, to the verifier. Some quick cost evaluation of our design. Because we are using hardware to log all the control flow transfers, there's no runtime overhead associated um, with creating the control flow log. We evaluate our design um, compared to the most closely related work, hardware-based control flow attestation architectures, and we implement it on, this, on an FPGA and evaluate the cost with respect to lookup tables and flip-flops. Our design costs 275 lookup tables and 202 flip-flops, which is roughly six times less lookup tables and 10 and a half less flip-flops than the, the cheapest related um, hardware-based control flow attestation architecture, light hacks. And that is all I have for today. If you are interested in more details about the design, you could follow our paper here. And if you, you would also like to see the open source uh, prototype of our design, including an, a demo of a crafted exploit detection, you can visit our GitHub repository here. Thank you. Okay.